What's going on, everybody? Happy no... No, no, it's not right. <laughs> we are doing episode 100 of the Dark Windows podcast, finally. Woo-hoo! Holy shit. Pop that cork! I'm trying, dude. Jesus, you big bitch. Here we go. Come on! Do it! Woo! There it is. And I'm going to drink an entire bottle of champagne while we do this. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take a, a, a swig or so. You sure? I don't like champagne. I ain't even drink. I don't mix this shit with fucking orange <laughs> juice, dude. Just drink it out the bottle. You're a fucking lush. <laughs> <laughs> that went right up in my fucking sinuses. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> You want to know the best thing, though? I can breathe out of my nose again. That cleared it the fuck out. That was sweet. Oh, oh my God. That kind of fucking hurt. I'm not going to lie. But, like I said, I can breathe out of my nose. Wow. Fucking studio is gonna smell like a whorehouse now. Just cheap champagne everywhere. <laughs> There's no sex in the champagne room. There's sex in the studio though. I don't mix this shit. <laughs> you don't. You're, You're fucking, fucking just drinking out of the bottle. Shit, <laughs> you The problem was it created too much of a seal. And I didn't let the air escape. Oh, you got to seal off, right? I just fucking locked right around it and started sucking it back. Your eyes are watering because of one thing. My eyes, my eyes are watering from fucking laughing so much. Because It wouldn't be our show if one of us didn't do something fucking retarded on the 100th episode. Just throwing it out there. Wow, fuck me sideways. All right, give me a fucking... Whoo, holy shitzel. Shoot. All right. You should have gotten a glass, dude. Well. I got extra dry. I didn't get brut. I got extra dry because it's a little bit sweeter. Not as bad. No, that's pretty good. <sighs> yeah. Oh. <sighs> wow, fuck me sideways. I can act like I said, I can breathe out of my nose now. <laughs> that was absolutely fucking great, though. <laughs> you just fucking took that fucking, you were like. Because I just. You were like fucking. I fucking just muckled onto it. I didn't, I made too much of a seal. I didn't. <laughs> Open the sides of my lap, my lips to <laughs> let air in, like you're opposed to with this stuff because it's bubblies. Yes. Fuck. Uh, anyway, uh, back woof. to back to planet Earth here. Yeah. Uh, yes, episode one hundred. Yeah, Woo! buddy, we fucking made it. Yeah, I mean, it took a little longer than expected, but you know, <laughs> we got there. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know what it is? What what it is? What it is? And all that good stuff. Studio. Headphones. Jesus Christ, and dude. earbuds. I know. We've, we've had them for like 80 episodes, and you're still bad at this. I said, I said, what? You fucking like. I butchered the, you know, the intro. You're fucking boo-fooed your own like segue. Hey, I said, hey, listen. Yeah. That's me, okay? I know. But I said headphones and, and earbuds and, and, and the speaker. Yeah. Yeah, so go over to studio.com. Check out their headphones, earbuds, and their speaker, their Bluetooth speaker. You'll love them. I know you will. Yes, it's awesome. Put in what you want in your basket and go to checkout. Put the promo code of DarkWindows15 in to get 15% off your entire purchase. Yes. I mean, who doesn't like saving money, especially right now? So this week. Yes, this week on episode of episode 100 we are going to be covering chernobyl yes. the, the chernobyl accident to be precise they call it an accident but it's more like a a disaster or was it no well, it was a disaster or was it because there's a lot of like a lot of stuff that we can talk about also mm. that yeah. says it was not an accident 
Well, I'm not saying. I just said, yeah, accident or you could call it disaster. Yeah. You know, which is still affecting people to this day. Yes. People, wildlife, and the environment. So, I mean, the fuck. We'll we'll get to, you know, most of that, but holy shit. I didn't realize to what extent things were actually done at Chernobyl after said fact. Yeah. To try to, uh, bring things under control I mean I was like holy shit I mean yeah I'm gonna jump the gun here they killed just about every single animal within I don't know how far it was a ways a certain distance like 100 maybe uh, 10 20 miles something like that whatever it was maybe 10 miles but the good news is they're starting to come back yeah and there's actually higher populations of, uh, of animals there than there was before yeah they have taken it back over so Chernobyl, the Chernobyl accident actually happened on April 26, 1986. Uh, so some of you may not have been alive to remember this, and some maybe have been alive to actually remember it. I was kind of like, you know, it, this is one of those events that kind of stopped the world in its tracks. I was like pre Twinkle when this happened, but well, I mean, I was, I was close. I was six years old. You were sixty three when it happened. <laughs> No, actually, I was only six, and You'd I had already fought in World War One and two. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. At six years old, sat out Korea because yeah. fucking fuck well, Korea, fuck Korea. Vietnam didn't want to do with it. Yeah, they drafted old. you, you burned your card and your bra. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Then I went to Canada. Yeah, yeah so. fucking deserter, I know. pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I figured. Hey, like you know, so many fucking presidents. Listen, I figured World War One and World War Two were enough. But I mean, realistically, how many pre- how many Future presidents dodged the draft for World War Two. Uh, not World War Two, uh, Vietnam. Quite a few. Uh, George uh, W. No, he actually no, no. He didn't actually. He no. He was actually in the military. He never got sent. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Wait. I think it was JFK that I think skipped out on Korea. JFK didn't have to go. No, because he knew people. Well, yeah, well, that's what happens when you know people. John Kerry went and quote unquote got hurt. Listen, one of them's a fucking shaving accident. A piece of rice doesn't count. Our current president dodged it. I mean, yeah. Eh. Well, when your dad's a millionaire or a billionaire, you know, you don't have to go. <laughs> Some <laughs> of us, our fathers got us into the National Guard. <laughs> I watched that last night. I'm sorry. Yes, Robin Hood. Man. <laughs> so. Like I said, some of you may or may not remember. I was alive for the meltdown, but unfortunately I was only six, like I said. So I don't remember it. And I don't remember it like I do events like the Rodney King beating or the space shuttle. Was, I think it was Atlantis that exploded. The Challenger? Or Challenger, yes. Or the Lusitania sinking. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Jesus. Because you're old. Or O.J. Simpson... Pearl being Harvard. arrested or the trial. <laughs> get, get fucked, asshole. <laughs> God. Uh, but, I mean, this wasn't actually the first time there was a situation with a nu- nuclear reactor. I mean, it, not the last, either. Definitely not. Because there was... There was this neat little thing called Fukushima a few yeah. years ago. Yep. And there was actually a uh, Seven Mile Island. Three Mile Island. Oh, three Mile, whatever. Just knock off fucking four miles, whatever. Don't matter. <laughs> It wasn't that good. It was only three miles. And then the eventual disaster when Vermont Yankee explodes and kills fucking everybody if we're lucky. It's actually decommissioned. That's that's unfortunate. And second off, uh, Homer Simpson works there. Homer Simpson can get fucked. (laughs) The Simpsons haven't been funny in 10 years. (laughs) I don't know. I haven't watched it. (laughs) So... Yeah, so before we get too far into this, so let's, let's, well, I want to set the stage for this. So the Chernobyl Power Complex is located 130 kilogram, kil- kilograms. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that fucking... It's approximately 62 pounds away. Fuck. My, my goddamn notes just went away. <laughs> because they were embarrassed. I know. Motherfucker. <laughs> oh, my God. Literally, I was like... I was scrolling down and they fucking disappeared. How many ounces is it between Chernobyl and Kiev? <laughs> About uh, 10. <laughs> Fuck. So, 
So, yes. Uh, <laughs> First time your notes have ever run away, they're just like, fuck this, we're leaving. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Chernobyl po- co- Power Complex is located 130 kilometers north of Kiev. Which is approximately like 80 Ukraine. miles. Yeah. And about 20 kilometers south of the border with Belarus. It consists of four nuclear reactors. Those reactors are RBKM-1000 design, yeah, which is a Soviet-made water-cooled reactor with individual fuel ch- channels that uses graphite as a uh, moderator. And a lot of people will think that it was the reactor's fault that this happened. No. It's not because they actually used these reactors in a plant in Kursk that they'd built. It was like... 400 miles east of Pripyat. It was in Russia. Um, well, they used, like, they, they had built several reactors. They actually had used, they they had built this same reactor in, um, I'm going to get it wrong. I think it was Egypt or Israel. Well, uh, fuck. I think it was Egypt. Maybe I'm wrong. They, they built another one, at, uh, like, in the Middle East, okay? They had actually built one, and it actually and it actually had been um, was exploded. But you know, it was working perfectly fine. Right. And they had others of that same kind working in Russia. And yeah, the the one in Kursk was actually built in the same kind of time frame. Uh, they had six of them there. It was built between 1972 and 1976, so literally the same time that yeah. um, that Chernobyl was being built. And they didn't have any issues at that plant with no. any of these reactors. So it wasn't the machine, it was the people running it. Yes. That yes. fucked but the whole we'll, pooch. We'll get into that. So um so like I said, it's water cooled reactor with individual fuel channels using graphite as a moderator. It is also uh known as a light water graphite reactor. Now, I have to stop here because some might be like, Well, what the hell does that have to do with anything? This is kind of boring, you know, yeah. it doesn't mean anything. Well, this actually all plays a role in kind of understanding why what happened happened because of this type of reactor and you know everything that you know of course it goes along with it this all plays the part okay so now back to the reactor so as boiling water the boiling water reactor uh the boil, water boils in fuel set channels at about 6.9 uh, MPA. Which is megapascal. Yeah. I had to look it up because I was yeah. like, MPA, what the fuck's this? Yep. And the steam is separated above them in a single uh, circuit. Two- it is designed uh, over, it was designed between uh, 1964 to 1966. So just to jump in quick, just for a conversion for anybody that. Is trying to figure out what kind of pressure this is building. Uh, the 6.9 megapascal is equal to about a thousand psi, mm-hmm. so it's pretty pretty heavy pressure going on. It's not mm-hmm. you know. Um, so its precursors were an experimental spir- experimental uh, 30 megawatt um, L uh, light water generating reactor. Yeah, the graphite that, reactor, which was at um. Uh, 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 Obinsk. Obinsk. Yeah. Which started up in 1954. Which I think was one of their, like, first, like, that first generation of nuclear power plants that they built. Because yeah. that was, like, and right then, quickly after World War II. Yeah. And then there was um, two more smaller prototypes in uh, Belyarsk, which had one and two, mm-hmm. um, which ran from 1964 and 68, respectively. Um, the combination of the graphite moderator and water coolant is found in no other power factories in the world. Needless to say, having a one-off of something is not a very good idea at all. No, no, because you don't have the, uh, you don't have as much, you don't have as much, uh, leeway, I guess. No. You don't have a control and an experimental one. Yep. It's like, so everything you're trying, you're fucking around with just the one. So if something bad happens... You're kind of boned. Yeah. So, like, like I said, there were four reactors in this whole facility. The first two were built between 1970 and 1977. The next two, reactors three and four, were built in 1983. 
Now, I learned something also with this. At the time of the accident, they were actually in the process of building two uh, more reactors. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and I was actually going to say that. And you they, read my mind. Some of the like some of the sources I saw, they were going to either use the same RBMK models or they were going to use a newer version that they had switched over to. Um, the one of the one of the. Uh, it, it, no, it was actually going to be an RBMK. Okay, because I had seen I had also seen that. Um, or RBK. Because sorry. in the uh, fuck was it, the Kursk plant. They had built two more after everything had happened, and they were like an upgraded model, so it was like the next generation of the RBMK. Uh, so I don't. I think they probably would have just stuck with what they were building anyway, because they knew how to run it. You don't have to retrain people to well to do all kinds of other shit too. Yeah, I mean, so now if you actually had paid attention, you would have heard that you know the three and four were built in 1983. Yep, they weren't built between 1970. Like, you know, like seven year period, like one and two were, they were built in one year. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, though, by the time you've already built those first two over the course of a little bit, you kind of know what you're doing a little but, bit more. So, but you're also rushing stuff. This is what is part of the problem. Yeah. Because you, were- you built it in a year. You didn't take time to go seven years and get things right. Is it safe to say that they were... Russian, oh, they were Russian, <laughs> all right? Yeah. Um. So, now in the area of where this whole thing took place, which is a uh, uh, Ukraine, um, is described as the Belarusian type wood woodland with a population density that is you know with well, a low population density. Yeah, it's not a not a very yeah. So about two miles or three kilometers away from the reactor is the was the new city of Prepyat, which uh, then ha- inhabited had in- forty nine thousand inhabitants living there, yep. and it was mostly built for the workers of the Chernobyl power plant. Um, now nine miles or fifteen kilometers away from uh, the actual plant as well was the old town of Chernobyl, which had a population of 12,500. Yep. Um, that which was to the southeast of the plant. Now, within the 30-kilometer 30, uh, 30 radius of the power plant, the total population was between 115,000 to 135,000 at the time of the accident. Yeah, so I mean, for the size of the area, it's a pretty low population. Yeah. Considering the, like the area that we were just talking about is several hundred square miles, and there's yeah. like not a lot of people at all in it. No. Um, so the day prior to the ac- to the accident at the reactor, the crew of Chernobyl Four were preparing for it to test to determine how long turbines would spin and supply power to the main circulating pumps following a loss of main electrical power. Um, this test had been carried out at Chernobyl the previous year, but the power from the turbine ran down too rapidly, so new voltage, re- voltage regulators designs had to be you know, put, implemented, which is why they are being tested. Right. Um, now it is worth noting that at this point, the next um, that the next day, the day of the accident was going to be the day where they were going to perform the test. Mm-hmm. Like I said. Um, now, I don't think that performing the test was a bad thing, because I mean you have to, you have right. to, you have to test things, you have to periodically. But but you have to do it responsibly. Yes, which they very much did not. Yeah, because there was a series of operator actions, including the disabling of uh, certain parts of the machinery mm-hmm. uh, that were not so good. And let's let's. Not let, let's put into focus here that this was not some guy just fucking off and not doing his job right. This stuff was being disabled under the orders of the plant manager, essentially. Yeah. So actually, let's let's get <laughs> let's actually get into that. So yeah. so now let's jump ahead to the day midnight of April twenty sixth. Yep. They're getting. You know, let's set this stage midnight. Okay. They all know that there's going to be a test. 
Well, at least most of them did. Right. There's a few in the plant that actually thought that the test had actually had happened earlier that day. Yes, which it was supposed to, but they didn't because um, from the higher ups, they had said, if we do this test earlier in the day, there's a very good chance it causes a blackout throughout the surrounding area, Yeah, which is not going to be a, a great thing because that's like peak power usage. Like most people are getting home from work. They're cooking dinner. They're doing whatever. Yeah. So if you cut their power off. You're going to have a lot of pissed off people. Right, which, I mean, it's the fucking Soviet Union. You can only get so pissed off because they'll just kill you. So, well, I mean, they did – it really – from everything that, you know, looking at film footage this, Yeah, this is stuff, kind of like the end of the Soviet Union being shitty. I mean, it, things were kind of really nice there. Right. It was a very nice area, but, yeah. again, I mean, if you cut people's power off when they're in the middle of trying to fucking – watch the well, wheel and cook their, their spaghetti, they're going to be pissed off. Well, it's like anybody, yeah. you know? I mean... What is this, fucking North Korea? You're just going to cut our power off at 5 o'clock at night? Yeah. Get I mean, fucked. Look at anybody, you know? You, you, you cut my power off when I'm trying to, you know, wash, you know, do some laundry or, you know, feed my kids or, you know, whatever. Tend to your fields. Tend to my fields, <laughs> you know? Motherfuckers. <laughs> but, I mean... So, yeah. I just okay. got Pornhub wheeled up, and all of a sudden the fucking power goes out. Mother and now I'm here with a semi chub in my hand and nothing <laughs> else to do about it. That's when you finish it. My imagination's gotten weak over the years. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So, anyway, <laughs> midnight rolls around. Okay. They are getting saying, okay, we're going to do this. In the control room, you got your special operators. And you have one guy in particular that's never usually there. I've got names, actually. Yes. Who would hear these names? So you have Leona Toptanov, who is the control engineer. So he's the man at the fucking ones and twos. Like, yep. He, he's the man kind of uh, that they, they blamed the most. Yes. Even though he's the least at fault because he was just doing his job. Well... Who, no, I'm sorry, I should say, who some of these other guys yeah. were blaming for not, you know, do, doing their job. Even though there's multiple times throughout this whole thing where he's like, hey, this is not a good idea. Maybe we should slow down. Yeah. And then the guy who was also take his side is Alexander Akinov, who was the shift commander. Yes, he, he was in charge of. He was, he was basically the shift supervisor. Yeah, he was supposed to be in charge of the control room that night. Yes. And he was generally in charge of the control room because he was like the... Um, you would have basically had your second or third shift, whatever the hell... You know, if, yep. if they do two shifts or three shifts, I have no idea. I wasn't in HR. But he would have been the guy that was there every night working with these guys, making sure shit was going right. And then you have Deputy Engineer Anatoly Dyatlov, who, by the way, is not related... To Dyatlov of the past. Yes. <laughs> um, and this guy was usually there during the day. He was the fucking overall boss of uh, reactors three and four. So he would have been like, this was his area. Um, and he was actually one of the Soviet Union's most experienced nuclear engineers that they had at the time. Which is impressive considering this guy grew up in a fishing village in Siberia with alcoholic parents. His father beat the shit out of him as a kid. And he fucking ran away from home at 14 but, and put himself through school and college and everything. And, you know, but, but he was still an asshole. Let's not get so high on him because no, I'm just saying for all of his shortcomings, you got to see like, yeah, he, he he went through some shit and he yeah. got he he rose himself up to where he was. He wasn't just appointed there for a reason. Yeah, but well, he was still an asshole. Y- yeah, well, I still say where he got to, I think, was uh, there's a lot of fucking strings pulled because people didn't want to uh, have any backlash because that fucking asshole was actually, you know, responsible for a lot of people's deaths yes. in uh, a certain um, submarine accident. Oh, the uh, A-19? <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. up, uh, up a little bit north. Um, and he should actually have been dead at this point but he, he was should, a, he, no he really should have been dead because he had so many uh, such a high amount of i, I don't know the, like the actual 
the term for it there there cuz there's a russian amount of um radiation that they use uh, there's a the mega sieverts or whatever no, it is no it's something else that they use well it's the same difference basically it, 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 he had like 50 times i think they said it was his rad's level got too high yes basically <laughs> what you could say his rad well, level you, was you like 50 times traipsing around through the glowing sea you're going to die shit happens well, his, like I said, his his rad level was 50 times or so more than what an average person's was supposed to be. And instead of turning into Spider-Man, he turned into a prick. Yeah, and he should have actually really been dead. But, I mean, he probably could have been executed for it, but since he was a big-time party guy, they were like, eh, we let it slide. Yeah. yeah. And then they, were... they let fucking Andre Chikatilo slide on a whole bunch of child molestings. Pretty sure this, no big deal. Nobody gets hurt. You're okay. Yeah, so, and there was one more guy in the, um, in there actually as well. There was a, uh, I can't remember his name. I only got the three. There to was be one. There was one more guy. He was actually in charge of um, the water containment. He was actually a, um, a pretty well. Um, he knew his shit. Right. Like I mean, you know. Uh, pot, uh, Potlov actually, or Dotlov was actually trying to say, okay, hey, you know, you know, correct this, and you know, he, but he wasn't really giving him much crap yeah. because the guy knew what he was talking about, right? And he's like, you know, because he had a whole bunch of stuff going on, but that's but that's jumping the gun. Yeah, these are these are the three guys that we're going to focus on for that's, the. That's jumping yeah. the gun. So these are these are our main characters for so the whole thing. He says, you know. Old pass there he says, "Okay, start this. You know, start this up. Start shutting it down. Okay, I want you to go down to two hundred. They're like, what? Yeah, that's a little low because usually the the tests were usually done at like between five and seven hundred. Between no, that actually they're supposed to have been done between seven hundred and a thousand. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I was backwards. And that's what." Because that's what, um, well, um, oh, that's that's right. Because they said that five hundred was like the very, very lowest end of being yeah. still safe. Yeah, because that's what actually what um, uh, the the man in charge of the the boss, the well, the control room, Akinov, Akinov actually yeah. said was like, no, sir. He's like, no, the um, the commit not commission. Um, the I can't think of the term. Um Safety Council or something? Yeah, yeah. Basically. Basically says, Hey, this is the guidelines. We're supposed to be between seven hundred and thousand. Right. For this to be safe. And he's like you know, basically, who the fuck are you? Yeah, I think he was trying to rush through this whole thing. I don't I don't I, I think he I don't know if he was trying to rush it or if he was trying to test it. When you have guidelines to test things, you should stick to the guidelines, because if not, that's how you fuck stuff up. Well, I should say, w- before we get too far, um, talk about testing things, they should have tested this goddamn thing beforehand. Yes. And they should have actually gone down to that 200 before this place opened, and they never did no. it. Never once did it. Which... Fucks them at the end because a lot of this stuff would have been found out before the the village was built, you know, and before you move fifty thousand people there to work at your plant. Yeah. yeah, or you had you know x amount of people working there. You wouldn't ha- you wouldn't know this, right? You could shut it down, be safe, you know, have everything done. But no, 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 no. This guy's an asshole. Yes. Anyway, so yes, they started up. They started up this uh, this test. So okay, so the test was to uh, was to determine whether the cooling uh, the cooling of the core could continue, uh, like even if there was a power a loss of power, like we said. So just a uh, a side note of kind of like a little bit of like inside baseball about how this thing works is inside the reactor. There's uh, control rods that run everything. Mm-hmm. There is. Uh, in this particular reactor, there was 1,100, uh, 1,161 fuel rods. And the way they work is basically when the uranium, uh, atoms are split, it generates a massive amount of heat 
and that heat creates steam, which raises to the top of the tank. When the steam gets there, it runs a, a turbine that generates electricity. Yep. So there's also, like, inclu- like as part of the f- the control rods, there was, uh, the, I'm sorry, as part of the fuel rods, there's 200 and, 211 boron control rods that are kind of staggered throughout the rest of the rods. And these are the ones that have the most, I mean, they're, they're called control rods for a reason. These are where you basically have your gas and your brake. So the further you raise these out of the, uh, out of the water, the further you raise them, the faster, the less control you have to get them back into, to, to stifle anything that might happen. But that was supposed to, and, but they were taking them out. Yeah, you're not, they, you're not supposed to take them all the way up out of the water. Yeah. And Dyatlov's like, nah, we can just fucking put them right up, see what happens. Yeah, let's take them right up and out. And he was like, oh, shit. And as as he's trying to raise them slowly, he's just telling them, just, come on, faster, faster, trying to get them. So instead of slowly accelerating, he wanted them to just fucking stomp on the gas, just stand on it and get him up out yeah. of there. Which is not a good idea. And, and, and it went from like, what was it, um... I don't know, whatever, I don't remember what the exact level it was. It went from, like, 800 to 200 right quick. Yeah, it fuck, and then it, like, it actually began to, like, plummet even further. I, or I guess it got to 200, and it stabilized. Right, which they weren't quite sure why it would do that. They were like, okay, it's stabilized here. It's like, okay, well, now he's like, all right, start your, start your you know, let's, let's really start, start your now. engines. So, anyway, so w- w- I've got a timeline that we're going to kind of go over. Just kind of recap everything here. It starts at midnight, and then we're going to go in increments of yeah. amounts of time after that. So at a minute, six seconds after midnight, the scheduled shutdown of the reactor starts. Gradual lowering of the power is begun at this point. It's supposed to be gradual. Slow. It's supposed to be gradual. It's supposed to be gradual. Three minutes and 47 seconds after the beginning, the uh, lowering of reactor power halted at 1,600 megawatts, which was uh, like the thermal temperature. Yeah. 14 minutes. The emergency cooling core system was isolated, which was actually part of the procedure as it's supposed to be done, to prevent it from interrupting the test later. The fact that the emergency co- uh, core cooling system was isolated did not contribute to the incident because um, it had been available um, to kind of slow any impact that they would have had. Yeah, well, and they also, I mean, jumping in a little bit. Yeah. So this whole time... So between that twelve oh six to all this, there's there's this back and forth between the three guys yeah. that Kevin mentioned, and there's like this back and forth. Well, the two guys, the it's first, two on one basically. Yeah, the first two guys are like in, they're totally like you know, hey, we know how this thing is supposed to be working. Yeah. You know, the guy we run his, this every night. Yeah, this guy is like, I know what my job is. I know how to do this. and But you don't know how to do it as well as I do because I'm your boss. Yeah. Well, you know, they're trying to, like, basically you know, tell them. Well, so. It turned into the, a dick measuring contest that caused a huge fucking issue. So then at the point. So the, the, other, the guy that was actually on the controls was told, all right, listen, if you don't want to do this, fine. He looks over this other guy and he's like, hey, you, get on there. He lowers it down. But then at the same time, at uh, what time would you say it was? Uh, it was 14 minutes after midnight. 14 minutes after midnight. All of a sudden you have this cooling issue because there's a fucking panel that goes, starts going beep, beep, beep. And the other guy goes, oh, shit. Well, he, he's kind of oh. going, he's kind of going, okay, hey, I, I realize this. I recognize this going on. This happens a lot. Right. And I'm kind of going... Let, let, let me jump in here because all of this stuff that we just read was leading up to midnight where we have the shift change. Well, no. I mean, these guys are on right. the shift. Well, no. Then uh, I, I fucked up. I was reading this incorrectly. Because um, these guys are on the shift. They're, this All this stuff is happening. No, the real shit doesn't start happening until after shift change because that was all that was all uh, up like leading up to 2,400 hours at well, shift change. Well, I'm... I'm all this stuff is happening right, like right through it. So the water coolant reactor, water coolant starts having an issue. 
they're like, oh, shit, what the hell's going on here? Yeah. Well, this guy's like, okay, hey, I recognize this. Oh, I, I, you know, the guy's like, shut the goddamn buzzer off. Dot Lob's like, shut it off. Yeah. He's like, I'm sick of listening oh. to it. He's like, okay. didn't take any mind to it. He's like, I, I, I know what's going on. So he starts messing with it and he does, you know, shuts it off, gets it shut off. Meanwhile, the other two idiots are still going at it. And mean, and then, um, 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 the the chief the the head of uh of the shift basically looks over Akinov. I'm Akinov. sorry, I have to keep going back because these fucking Russian names yeah. kill me. <laughs> so Akinov, there's a lot of there's a lot of ovs in there, and I can't keep them straight. He tells Dotlov, "Listen, you want to do this? All right, but I want you to sign something. Yeah, I want it in writing says, saying that say, that we're doing this. Yeah, we're doing this, and you're taking. He's like." Gets all puffy and everything else. He's like, no, uh, no, uh, listen, uh, I'm the man in charge here. I'm your supervisor. I'm, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm your supervisor. I know what I'm talking about. So who do you think they're going to listen to? Even though he didn't. Didn't know shit. Okay. So, five minutes after one, the power level has been decreased to 720 megawatts to uh, uh, and, conti- uh, whew, and continue to be reduced. Although in, uh, INSAG, which I'm not, I don't remember what that one stands for. Um, it's one of the, um, it's basically one of the control systems, kind of, um, one of their their guidelines, and it, it states that the operate uh, operation below 700 megawatts was forbidden, sustained, uh, and they kind of just like kept going, like whatever, and like we said, this is where we start having problems. Yeah, 128. When the power level is at about 500 megawatts, control was transferred from the local to the automatic regulation system. The operator uh, may have failed to give the, quote, hold power at required level signal, or the regulator uh, system failed. It's unclear whether somebody dropped the ball or one of these new regulators screwed up. Well, from what I saw, it was actually the regulator actually was actually failed because... They didn't. He was just being told to drop it, drop it, drop yep. it, shut the goddamn thing up. You know, I mean, the other guy that was on the controls got shoved off. You got the new guy on who got it down to the two hundred. It sat at two hundred, and then they wanted to slowly work it back up. Right, and I, I apologize. I said uh, one twenty-eight. It was actually twelve twenty-eight. Yeah. Um. So twelve forty-three twenty. Uh, twelve forty-three and twenty-seven seconds. Turbo generator trip signal blocked in accordance with operation and testing procedures. In SNAG one, I'm sorry, in SAG one, correctly reported the event occurring at 1.2304 and stated the trip would have saved the reactor. So basically, if um, there there was essentially a um, like a backdoor built into this whole system, where if it got to a certain power level, it was supposed to trip a giant breaker. Which would have effectively made sure that those control rods stayed under the water in the tank. Yeah, well, yeah, it was supposed to hit the backup generator. Right, which exactly. Which the backup generator didn't kick in right. at all. So yeah, we have the backup generator, and then there was the failsafe that would have it would have lit it would have actually locked the 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 uh, the power and control rods in the water. But so they couldn't be raised until it was but according reassessed. To, according to what I saw at this point in time. That wouldn't have made a difference no. at all because everything was so hot inside of it. It was a pressure cooker. It was a pre- I mean, it was a pressure cooker. Of course, you know. So what? Well, we're at uh, one twenty six. We're right getting now. we're getting up to one o'clock right now. Okay, so we're close to one o'clock. You know, so by this time they're like, the pressure is building back up. And so yeah, let, let me get into it here. So at one o'clock, the reactor power had risen had risen back up because it had actually dropped below the 200 megawatts. So it had risen back up to 200 megawatts and stabilized. Uh, The operators may not have known it, uh, but the required operating uh, operating reactive margin or ORM of 15 rods and been violated. So it basically compromised these 15 rods. So they would have been needing to be replaced because they've kind of ruptured or there's something not, not kosher with them anymore. Yeah. At 103, 
a standby main circulation pump was switched into the left-hand cooling circuit in order to increase the water flow to the core. This was to try to cool it down. Yeah, and this is why the this is the second light that came on. Right, and, and th- this light was actually supposed to come on because this was part of uh, part of the procedure. Yep, and the guy that's over on the controls for it is like, all right, yeah, cool, yep. cool, yeah, we're we're good. So we it. we got a little low, but we're good. We can pull it back. So we're coming up to 1.07 a.m., but right now we're going to take a quick break and we'll come back and try to finish this off. Okay, so we are back. All right, let's 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 continue yes. on with uh, our, our uh, super boring timeline, which is actually way more exciting than we're making it sound. It's fucking, like I, I felt like I, when I was watching this stuff for it, I, I don't know about you. I got fucking antsy. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, like we're, we're getting to the point now. Like there's some stuff coming up. Yeah. That I don't I don't know if you're if you're actually gonna cover it, but I'm, the stuff that I I saw that I was like, holy shit! No way! No! Yeah. No! So at 107, an additional cooling pump was switched on to allow water into the right hand cir- uh, cooling circuit, which is also part of the procedure. So because uh-huh. obviously you don't, I guess you didn't want to have if you had the water coming in on both sides at the same time, it would have cooled it down too much. And that could have created an issue as well, I guess. Um, now, now, keep in mind, uh, I gotta, I gotta, yeah, yeah, I gotta put something in mind for you, everybody. The rods are still up. Yes, they're completely out of the water. They're out of the water. The okay. control rods are Compl- control, control rods are completely out of yes. water. The power, the power rods are still in. The control rods are out. No, just just keep that in mind. Yeah. So we are rapidly <laughs> coming up. To a very, very steep T minus, downhill. T minus, boom. <laughs> and we forgot our brakes somewhere else. Yeah. Like, the brakes at this point are in the fucking trunk. They're not going to do us any good. They're in the box still. We have not replaced them. No, no. Some Somebody forgot to uh, check the brake fluid. Yeah. Maybe. So, 119. This is an approximate at 119. The steam drum level was still near the emergency level. So, it's still kind of, like, very, very high. So to compensate, the operator increases feed water flow. This raises the drum level by further reducing uh, reactivity to the system. The automatic controls, uh, I'm sorry, the automatic control rods went up to the upper plate to compensate, but further withdrawal of manual rods was required. So all all of the control rods that can go up automatically, as they're supposed to, are up. There's still some in there that would have to be commanded to go up because there are some of them that as you're doing the testing when you hit certain uh guidelines they would raise themselves automatically yeah. through the system and then there's some that are not supposed to go up unless you tell them to to like replace them or something and those ones are still down mm-hmm. 123 reactor parameters stabilized the unit shift supervisor considers the preparations for the test have been completed and he's now having the uh the oscilloscope switched on and he gave the order to close the emergency stop valves. So once this process starts and you shut those stop valves, there's no stopping it. One twenty. They they think the dot law thinks there's a way to stop. it. Yeah. Well, surprise motherfucker. There ain't that. He thinks that there's a way to, to stop the rise because you know, this time we're we're pr- approaching. I think this is somewhere around the. This is we're hitting seven hundred megawatt. Like it, it's 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 going to be on. They're, they're like going seven hundred, and it's like climbing by like fifty megawatts. It's going quick. It's it's going like be, like really rapid, and you know it, they're like he sees this. He's like you fucking idiot. You know what are you doing? So at one twenty three and four seconds. Turbine feed valves closed and start turbine, uh, and the start turbine begins coasting. This is the beginning of the actual test. So up until now, everything seems to be going somewhat normal. We had a little hiccup where we dropped a little bit too fast because somebody's a dummy, but we stabilized. So we're gonna take we're gonna do the test at a lower level than we're supposed to, because uh, I don't know. I think he thought that doing it at a lower level would make it safer, and it didn't. No, he just wanted to show off. Six of one, half of another. 
I think it was he wanted to show off. He he, he thought that you know by him doing that it would be go um, putting putting himself out on the line was was a was what the a company man would do. Yeah, a party guy would do that. Yes, a party guy. So according to uh, part of the uh, INSAG, uh, would be Section Seven. For the following, so again, INSAG is the um, testing parameter guidelines, kind of. Yeah. For the following 30 seconds of rundown of the four coolant pumps, quote, the parameter of the unit uh, was controlled and remained within the limits of the expected operating conditions and did not require any intervention. 12340. Emergency button AZ5 was pressed by the operator. Control rods start to enter the core to uh, increase the reactivity at the bottom of the core. Now, so the, the AZ five was supposed to be impressed because it was cr- it was climbing up too high. Right. They they're like, oh shit, it's climbing up too high. So this is this is where Dyatlov realizes we got to fix this. So he tells him hit that button, get those rods back in the water. Now remember what I said: the rods were out. Yes. And what they are made of. Boron. Boron. Going back into water. Not so good. Yeah. You have to do it very carefully. <laughs> 12343. Power excursion rate emergency protection system signals on. Power exceeds 530 megawatts. So we go from 200 megawatts to 530. Yeah. Very, very quickly, which is not safe. 12346. Disconnection of the first pair of main circulating pumps be, uh, begins rundown, following uh, followed immediately by disconnection of the second pair. 12347. Sharp reduction in the flow rates of the um, MCPs, the main control pumps, not involved in the rundown test, are unreliable. And uh, so basically, these other pumps that we have as an emergency pump to, to get more water in there are not working. Yeah. And, and now, mind you, at this time, so there's the guys in the control room. Yes. And now on the floor of of this place. You have like four technicians, I think. There's like uh, four or five technicians that are there. Right. And they don't, one of them, a couple of them don't exactly know that anything, that they're actually doing this test. Don't know any of this stuff. They're, they're more worried about like talking, once talking about fishing because he's going to go away for, because there's a holiday coming up. Um so he's going to take the kids and his ki- what kid and his wife away, and they're going to do some fishing near Preppy It because he found this really good spot. Apparently it was really good fishing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, have a couple of good-sized rivers right there. Well, so, you know, th- they're talking about that. One guy's talking about the sale of his car. Um, so, th- you know, they're just, like, doing whatever back and forth. Literally carrying on a conversation that they would have had anywhere else. If they were in fucking yep. lunch, they would have been talking about the same shit. Yeah. And, you know, so... They they don't have no clue about this, right? As these, as the water is not coming in, the pressure in the system is building to the point that, uh, like in the separator drums, that it's becoming unstable. And this is what I hate about fucking, fucking uh, doing having to do shit in Excel. You have to like hit 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 yeah. to finish sentences. One twenty three forty nine. Emergency protection signal, uh, and this, this, I'm sorry, the emergency protection signal, pressure increase in reactor space, rupture of fuel channel goes off. No voltage, 48 volts. So we have a rupture and we have no power to try to try to do anything to do with it. Yeah. The failure of actuators of automatic power controllers, number one and two signals also come on. 124. From a note in the chief reactor control engineer's operating log, quote, 124, severe shocks, the RCP rods stop moving before they reach the lower limit. Uh, the, I'm sorry, before they reach the lower limit stop switches, power switch of clutch mechanisms is off. So at this point in time, the reactor essentially explodes. Because, again, you have all this steam creating pressure and the separator drums that are in the reactor are overloaded. Yeah. So basically like these, these separator drums, I think they kind of work like what you'd have like for plumbing 
where it separates the air and the water. You know, like for your uh, hot water system. Yeah. To relief, uh, relief pressure. Well, I mean, and, and then the so the guys that are like watching this, they're like, you know, one guy's like watching the fucking valves, and he's like, "What the hell is going on?" One of these other guys like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, the valves are fucking and, like and, shaking at and this and point. This other guy, he looks over at the reactor, and he sees the plates and everything. They're like literally. Bouncing. Yeah. Bouncing up and out, which they're not supposed to do. Oh, no. <laughs> because it's, it's getting so hot. And he's like, oh, shit. So he rushes down, and he's trying to get to the control room. He goes to the door. He blasts the door and tells them, you got to do something. You know, Right. Because are, the, you know. the control room and where this guy is watching this happen at the reactor itself are two different areas. Yeah, and he's trying to like get like the like monitors. He's trying to you know, wave to them and, and tell them. You know, get them to, to see. Do you see what's going on? And you know, do you see any of this? And the, they're not responding. He blasts down, and he's like, "Hey, you idiots! <laughs> we got a fucking problem, the, boys. the The plates are literally bouncing up out of this. And meanwhile, was it uh, the, from what I watched? There was a few people up. One of the people that was up was actually one of the wives of um, one of the guys by the reactor. Yes, yep. that actually... Because um, her kid couldn't... They, the kid wouldn't sleep or yeah, something. the kid wouldn't sleep. And the building that they were in, the apartment complex they were in, you could actually see mm-hmm. the, um, the uh, uh, what do you call them, like the signal lights. So, like, planes didn't crash into the reactors. Yeah. You could see them from from their apartment. And, and then the um, another two that were up, one of them actually was the head mechanic. Right, on the day shift. He was out, like, fishing, I think. Yeah, he was out fishing with his, his buddy in, one of the, like, the river, and he, like, they, they were saying that, you know, basically the fishing sucked because no one was, nothing was biting. Right. At the time of, well, where we're coming down to, they're all out, they're up and about and everything else, and then it kind of, things are, shit hits the fan, right. you know, proverbially. And, I mean, to put it into perspective, these lids that you're talking about that are fucking, like, f- like bouncing up and off of this thing weighed somewhere in the neighborhood of a ton and a half. Yeah. Like, the lids are heavy, and they're fucking just boop, 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 bouncing all over the place. Because, I mean, they don't know that the control rods, because w- they put them down into the water. You can't see them. Yeah, they don't know that actually what happened was there was um, a fracture in the... Um, in down below. Yes. And uh, the heat. Yeah, I think they, I think it was like, they call it like a control plate or something like at the very bottom where all the rods would kind of like cradle in. Yeah. Well, the, 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 the water rising, you know, up and hitting these rods actually caused the, um, the plates to actually like fracture, which, you know, at this point is why everything is spiking. And, we're going to get the explosion. Right. So, shit, we are up to the explosion, basically. Yeah. Um, so the overpressure caused by that rupture in the channel. So when the channel ruptured, it actually jammed up, and it made contact with the control rods, which were only part way down, like we just said. And when this happened, it actually increased the steam level, like the, genera- like the steam generation. And this is where we get our pressure cooker blowing its lid Mm -hmm. and when it does it just launches all of this like nuclear material into the air so this is i believe these were uranium correct uh it it was either uranium or plutonium one of the two i think it was uranium rods uh hold on well it was um so these were let's see uh Water reactor, cool graphite reactor, water light water graphite reactor. Okay, so, so it, it but I mean the the graphite. But it's pl- like plutonium. It's yeah. plutonium. So like the the graph the rods are graphite and they control they transport the plutonium atoms up and down yeah. and back and forth and all that. So when these things blow, it just blows all this. Uh, we said plutonium. Yeah, it just right. blows yeah. all this shit up like directly up through the reactor and out through the top of the building. Um, and, and it actually, um, ends up instantly killing two, two guys yeah, that were, they were right at like, there was like a, if I remember correctly, there was something like, kind of like a guardrail around the, the reactors and they were right at the rail, like 
yeah. in shock, like, what the hell and, is going on here? The, one of the guys that actually, the, uh, um, one of the guys, the wife that was watching the whole, like, when it exploded, because um, she was like, oh, whoa, what the heck That's is that? That's weird, yeah. You know, just something happened. Oh, it's on fire. Well, her husband actually went to go save these other guys. Yes. He, he actually got to the point... This one point, and he saw the wall. He said the the concrete wall that was there that I was like freaking huge, thick. I don't like yeah, they're uh, like two or three feet thick, m- like meters thick. Yeah. yeah, he was saying that it basically was like nothing. It was it was like a piece of paper, yeah, just like fucking waving. Well, I mean, you have that much pressure and that much. And he said that the the guy that was talking about fishing, he hardly recognized him. Like he was so yeah. burnt, so bad, and he got finally got to the, went to go to the other guy. Other guy was gone. Yeah, he was because the fucking floor had dropped out, and he was he yep. was dead. He was there, there's nothing to find of him right. because when you have that much that side. much steam pressure and that much um, material that's basically designed to explode. Yeah, that's what happens. You know, um, uh, so uh, about two to three seconds after the explosion. It's like as as the explosion's happening, it's throwing fragments of the graphite rods and the fuel channels and all this stuff. And everything that's flying out of this reactor is on fire. Yeah. Which is not good. Um, and this uh, it's likely that this had been caused by the production of hydrogen from the zirconium uh, steel uh, reactors, mm-hmm. which were the bottom part of it. And, and this is blowing nasty shit up into the atmosphere which is well as you can guess going to float off yes but these when the fuel rods came through the side of it they were incandescent they were so hot it looked like lit fucking halogen bulbs flying through like if you took like those light bars and like electrified them and threw them through the air is what they looked like yeah except they're you know, fucking uh, like 12, 14, 16, whatever feet long. And mm-hmm. they're glowing. They're that hot. Yeah. There's nothing on the face of the fucking earth that's going to stop those things. So what do they do like any, you know, anybody? Well, the roof's on fire. Well, who do you call? The roof. The roof. The roof is, the on, roof fire. is on fire. We don't need no water because it's a nuclear fucking disaster. Well, they do need water because <laughs> they called the fire department. Yeah. And the fire department shows up in full gear and everything. They put out the fire. Well, if it tells you how much water they needed, it says that about 200 to 300 tons of water per hour were injected into the intact half of the reactor using, um, like, they had, like, a, a, an auxiliary system for, like, fire suppression. Except instead of being like the little piss ant ones like you see in your office or whatever, these were like basically fire hoses just yeah. spraying down. And these were being shot directly into the reactor. Um, Which, I mean, into the reactor didn't do shit. Right. It was basically they were worried about the roof. Well, they did it on the roof. And as soon as the firefighters came down, this was like from the words of one of the firefighters that actually survived. Um. The guys within minutes became sick. Yeah, and they started throwing up, and yep. they were instantly taken away by ambulance and brought to um, appropriate hospital, which is where a lot of people would eventually be going. Yes, and the reason they were getting sick is because they were being exposed to, to radiation. Yes, they were not. <sighs> It kind of depends, like, if you want to say fortunately or unfortunately, they were not exposed to enough to kill them right out, but a lot of these guys would end up dying of some yeah, breed of cancer later on in their lives. Because there is a, I believe it, what the hell was it, like 50 megasieverts of radiation is enough to kill you, like, outright. It liter- it will basically liquefy your insides and you just die. You bleed mm-hmm. out very quickly and die. Um, I mean... They, so they, yeah, so the guy, but the guy that was there still, like, that was down below, I don't know if he was the chief or whatever he was, he actually stayed until right. later that de- that morning in which he got sick and was actually taken away too. But, I mean, he had stayed 
from the time that, you know, they got there, put out the fire on the roof, you know, come out, sent his guys off. He stayed. And by, during that time, he had absorbed yeah, an ungodly amount of fucking radiation. Yeah. And, I mean, everybody else in there absorbed an, an astronomical amount. Yeah. So they, they actually pumped enough water into the reactor that it actually flooded. So that's a, that's a lot of water. Um, By the afternoon of the 26th, so that was that same day. Right. By that afternoon, they were taking readings in the town of Prepriate to find out how much radiation had actually flown over. Right. And the readings were 15 times higher than normal. Right. Now, meanwhile... I mean, because there, there is like a baseline of radiation that you get anywhere because we get it from the sun. We get it from natural sources on the earth. Plus, you're also that close to a, a, exactly. a, 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 you know, a nuclear plant. Right. You're going to have something. Exactly. Exactly. But this is 15 times higher. Yeah. Okay? That's a lot. Now, keep in mind, this is the afternoon. Kids, moms, dads, whatever. Are roaming the streets. Yep, and they Kids, didn't tell these people what had th- happened. There, nothing is being said yep. at this point. By that evening, the level was up to six hundred times the normal level. Right now, keep that in mind because, because with with a nuclear explosion, it's not it's not the explosion that's dangerous necessarily. It's once that it, equated to a mushroom cloud. What's well, once everything goes up. Mm-hmm. That's not that bad. But then once everything starts to come back down, that's when shit gets really bad. Well, they said that they actually said that this was um, worse than the Hiroshima bomb. Oh, absolutely. Um, because now, this was like an uncontrollable amount of shit that happened. So, yeah. So by that evening, there was 600 times the normal level. Okay. So during that first day, the people of Prepria absorbed 50 times the normal dosage of radiation Christ. for... Normal doshas for one year. If they had it stayed, they would have received a lethal lethal dosage in four days. Can you now, imagine now fifty thousand people yeah. just fucking dead. Now the thing is, if they had known about this, they could have closed, sealed off their doors, windows, all that, or evacuated and, and started taking iodine. Yep. Okay. To reduce the uh, the effects of radiation. Yep. Um, but they weren't. So after the readings in the city, uh, were made, you know, okay, came back, mm-hmm. Colonel Vladimir, uh, Grepnubik sent out some men to take readings at the base of the reactor. The number that they got at the reactor was so high that it all, um, that all would have taken if exposed would have been, if they had all been there. It would take 15 minutes for a human to be lethally dosed. Jesus Christ. And they weren't there that long. Okay, so if it tells you what's going on here, they weren't going to tell their own people what happened here. If they knew how bad this was, they weren't going to say anything at all. The only reason that any of this got out is because there was a, I believe it was a weather station in Sweden. Well, that, yeah, we're going to get there, right? Let's let's, let's, let's hold off on that. It actually. That's fucked. Like, that made me mad. So. Now, meanwhile, the – was he governor? No, what? not governor. He was the president of of Soviet Union, I guess you would call him. President, I think. Uh, Miguel Gorbachev. Yeah, whatever you want to call him. Um, he didn't know anything about this, but then after hearing the news, he created a special governmental commission, which was made up of, the, of Russia's top experts in the nuclear energy. It was headed by uh, Valery uh, Les- Le- Legoskov. And he- <laughs> Valery Legolas. Yes. He was an elf. He could run on top of the snow. He could. The he- nuclear snow. Yes. There he you know. actually went directly to Chernobyl. Okay. Now, his team was not able to tell Gorbachev anything about what was going on or didn't want to. And Gorbachev was the whole time because he actually was talking about this after. Right. 
He was, I was in the dark. He, I knew, I absolutely knew nothing. To, to give him his fair due, Gorbachev was probably the least shitty of the Soviet leaders. Yeah. So now, <laughs> 20 hours after the explosion, the levels of radiation are still climbing. Oh, of course. Why are they still climbing? Because the goddamn reactor that they dumped stuff into is still, still on fire. On fire. It is smoldering hot. Yes. And so the, prep te- the, the people of Prepria at this time, on the, the 26th, well, they should have been evacuated on the 26th. Yeah. Well, and had or had all this stuff done for, me- for measures. Yep. But yeah. no. So by 2 p.m. on the 27th, the first safety measures were taken. The military brings in buses and they make announcements over the intercom system throughout the town, mm-hmm. city, saying, grab your stuff. You have, um, you know, you have two hours to do so. Yes. Okay. They told them there was a little minor accident, but... It was, this was precautionary. Yeah, this precautionary. Yeah. You'll precautionary be out. fucking after the fact. You'll be out back in your house two weeks. Yeah. Okay. Well... There are some elderly people that remembered what happened during World War II and were like, middle finger, fuck you. Yeah. We, we're we not going to camp. Yeah. Fuck we're, off. We're, we're not doing this. Um, You know, so they, and they also thought that this was a lie because, you know, it was an enemy that they couldn't see. They saw the Germans drop bombs. Right. So they knew that there was an enemy. They couldn't, you know, it's... It's fucking, it's poison. You it's magic to some of these people. Yeah, it's like, fuck you, it, you I don't know this. Shit, whatever. So now in three and a half hours, 43,000 people were evacuated. That is impressive. Yes. To get that many people coordinated that quickly, that's impressive. But it took them three days to evacuate yeah, which, the whole place. Which they should have been doing. Within hours of this yes. fucking thing exploding. So, within 48 hours after the explosion, the only people left in the city were military, scientists, and some old people. So, basically, your emergency workers and your stalwarts that aren't going anywhere. Yeah. And, well, they actually, they, they actually one of the things I saw um, actually said that they had actually found one of this old guy that was one of them that, that was dead. Because yeah. you know radiation. So well, I mean that when you're when you're older, your body can't process yeah. that stuff as as easily as it can when you're young. Um, now they thought that the reactor would be back to service. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. So that bitch exploded. Yeah, the, the scientists that came in, that you know this from you know, the science organization. Yeah, they came in from outside though, so yeah. they're like, oh, it, they said it's a little rupture. Well, they they came in. They, you know, little rupture, okay. They were eating, sleeping in the town of Prepriate at the Prepriate Hotel. As if nothing, nothing at all happened. Because it didn't. You know. Because. And they felt that the whole reactor would be back up and working. Yeah. You know, in 100% capacity by May or June. Yeah. Because they they had, at this point in time, they didn't know at all. This goes to show you just how brainwashed people can be in a communist state. Yeah. Where they're like, no, 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 that's not what we were told, so that's not true. When so, you're fucking well, lying to yourself. Well, it's also because so little information is being passed on. Now, keep in mind, the KGB at this point in time didn't know shit either. No. They, they actually had to infiltrate... Their own people in Miguel Gorbachev, who is the president of this country, knows nothing. He is at still at this point. He's in the dark. He that's, knows nothing. That's fucking crazy to think so, about. So now, Kevin has said, you know, we've been talking about the clouds being filled with, you know, how all this stuff going up in the atmosphere. Clouds are being filled with radioactive particles. Yeah. And now the wind has got caught up. Yes. Starts being starts blowing it north. Between the twenty sixth and twenty seventh of April, 
those clouds drifted over a thousand kilometers over Russia and then north to Belarus, which would, I believe was Belarus. The, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then to the the Baltics. Yep. On the twenty eighth, the clouds hit Sweden, where the rise in radioactivity. Uh, is detected at their nuclear plant. Yeah, and they're like, wait, something's not right here. Like, our plant's working fine. What the hell's going on? Yeah. Now, the TV warns the people of Sweden about the radioactivity as the radioactive dust falls on Stockholm. Yeah. Because they're like, <laughs> oh, fun. shit. They, they think that something's wrong with their reactor. Like, oh, shit. Yeah, e- either something's wrong with their reactor or yeah. something's been bombed. So would be another fear, I would think, especially at this point in time in the, in the world. Yeah. You know? So they send... Jets up, and they're like, take readings, and their readings find that that the actual radioactivity is high, which told them there was a nuclear accident somewhere. Right, and the further south they flew, the higher they got. Yeah, which led them to believe it's probably somewhere in Russia or Belarus because the Soviets are pretty tight lipped with where all this shit was, which makes sense because yeah. you don't want you know us going over there and fucking one of them over on you. So sixty hours. After the accident, no word is being spread of the accident outside the Soviet Union. And still at this time, Gorbachev had no word about what was going on. And it was Sweden, actually, that told him that they they had detected radioactivity (laughs) in the air over their country. It's fucking crazy. And he's like, oh, shit, something's really going on. Three days after the accident... Our little spy plane. Yeah. We didn't have spy our, planes oh, over Russia. I'm sorry. The, our the, spy satellite. What are you talking about? We we never spied on Russia between 1945 and 1990. They, we would not have done that. We're above that, Kevin. No, we're not. We're not at all. They, the, our spy satellite <laughs> is flying over and snap Im, snaps images yeah. of, of this site. And they actually are like, holy shit, it's glowing freaking red. Yeah. Because they were using thermal, I'm assuming. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Either that or they're baking like the world's biggest fucking cookie down there, or they got a giant pot of borscht going. Yeah. But it's probably a nuclear reactor at this point. Yeah, that's it's crazy. Um, now, on the 28th, the Soviets released information about the, uh, to the world about the accident, and only, Gorbachev... Only after they were fucking forced to. If the Swedes had not found out about this, no. they wouldn't have said a fucking word. No, actually, Gorbachev... No, Swedes actually told him... No, Gorbachev knew nothing. Right. He knew nothing. Right. Until the 28th, when um, he had actually got word... Back from the KGB, like I had told yep. you, because they were spying on, he told them verbatim, you answer to me, you you will go there, you will spy. I want you to send up planes, no, I want what, you to take pictures. What, what, I, what I'm getting at is, if the KGB hadn't been there, and the Swedes hadn't gotten those readings, they wouldn't have said a fucking word. He wouldn't have known, because they wouldn't have said anything exactly. to him. Exactly. So after he had the information, he's like, oh fuck, I have to say something. Yes, because that's why, but... It's not him that's the problem. It no, was, it's everybody else. Because they didn't know. Right. They well, te- they technically did not know. They didn't know exactly how bad it was. Yeah, but that's one of those things where you should... <laughs> it's like a house, like a building catching on fire. You'd be like, maybe we should tell everybody in like the surrounding buildings yeah. that this one's on fire. <laughs> we got it under control, and then it burns the whole fucking neighborhood down. Exactly. So... So, yeah. So... <sighs> 28th, the Soviets released information to the world about the accident. Gorbachev instructed the KGB to go to Pripyat and basically spy on his scientists and report back to him directly. Right. Which they did, and this is where he opened, you know, he kind of, you know, they start say, opening up about it. Yeah. Um, so I think with that, we're going to stop there for now. Yeah. And I think next week we're going to pick up with more, and you're going to... Everybody's going to see how actually bad yeah. this was because, you know, they didn't know. They kind of thought that, hey, we don't see anything coming out of it. Oh, I guess the worst is over. No, it's not. Yeah. It's 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 totally not because Prepia is the first place to be evacuated. There is, you know, the next place is going to be the old town of Chernobyl. Yes. 
Um, one of the things that I found really sad was in all the research I was looking through, there was a kid there that he was a kid when it happened. He was like six or seven. And he remembers like the only thing he really remembers was being really, really upset that his mom and dad were taking him out of town because he was looking forward to the carnival opening on the 29th. So like they had like a, they had a fucking amusement park there that was never even open. Yeah. Like any, it's going to sound stupid. Anybody that's ever played call of duty, modern warfare has seen the Ferris wheel. They've seen all the other stuff. That stuff was never used. And this guy, like the only, like the thing he remembers the most clearly was being really, really sad as a kid that he didn't get to go on the Ferris wheel. Well, yeah. You know, it's like, I I saw this little girl, this girl that was a little girl when it happened that went back there after she actually went back to her own, her place. Like, you know, yeah, I don't know what it was, the 90s or something, early 2000s. Right. She actually went back to where her home was, and she goes, I was upset that I couldn't take all of my toys. I had to actually pick yep. certain toys I could take. And now you go back as a grown-up, and you still can't take them. You can't take anything. <laughs> that sucks. Because the radiation is still yeah, quite it's, high. it's fucked. I mean, I, mean I, I saw this guy. He was actually at the Prepiate um, Hotel. Um, hospital and he actually went to there he actually found the fireman's clothing that was that the fireman had taken off yep that were there that um on the early monday early the 26th and he actually took a um a reader Mm -hmm. and it was over the top of it and still had like high reading yeah because like porous stuff like clothing it like it literally will suck radiation into it yeah which is why, like, um, you know, we see in the movies or whatever, when somebody comes out of a radioactive thing, they have to strip down and then they fucking mm-hmm. spray them with that shitty soap and stuff. It's because you can't you can't keep your clothes; those are fucking gone. Yeah, because the radiation will cling to it. Now, no, which is why they one of the first things they tell you, like, if there's ever an, a, a nuclear ex, like a, a disaster hold, hold, or something, hold on. right there, stop, stop. Okay, I want everybody to, to listen to what Kevin just said. I want everybody, to, you know, if, if they don't know anything, if you guys don't know anything about this. Keep in mind what he just said, okay? Because there's shit to come that we're going to talk about next time where you're going to go, oh, yeah, Kevin said that, you know, they should uh, yeah. they should do this and do this. But you're going to hear about some guys that did not get told this. Yes. Did not get told a lot of this stuff, and they fucking ended up dying, yeah. most of them. Because, like, the one of the first things they will tell you in any kind of situation like this, and I only know this from watching, like, disaster preparedness and shit is if you're ever exposed to radiation, change your clothes as soon as you can and leave them outside. Don't bring them into your house. Fucking basically strip down naked because you don't absorb as much without your clothes as you would with. Yeah. And change your clothes immediately. Well, and some of these people didn't know half of this shit. And a lot, a lot of that is because we learned it from this happening, which sucks. Like it sucks that as a species, we have to learn the hard way. (laughs) Because we're not, we're too fucking cocky to take precautions and like think ahead because Uh as a species, we don't what if things enough. Like I do that constantly and that's why I have anxiety issues is because I what if every fucking situation I'm into death. Yeah. So maybe this is one of those episodes where you should, uh, before we even get to that, this is episode 100. Yeah. Thank you. If you've listened to us from the beginning of us, like, yes, being you. like fucking like weird, shy little idiots to the foul mouth, dumb fucks that we are now. Thank you. I'm getting I'm, I'm trying to get better. OK, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm getting a little teary just thinking about it. Like, I didn't expect this to actually fucking happen. <laughs> hey, I, I didn't expect us to like I thought this is going to be one of those ideas where we'd like we do it for a couple months and be like, oh, that was fun. Fuck it. Whatever. Find something else to do. And. But now, Either we're too stubborn to quit, or we're not dumb enough to realize that we're not good at this. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe you're good. I'm, I just suck. I mean... I'm fucking stubborn. You know that. I'm a pig-headed motherfucker. I mean, you know, some people just don't like me, I guess. And I mean, I I might be, like, a little buzzed, because I did drink an entire bottle of fucking champagne through this uh, whole thing. Lush. But, and I got hey, a sip. you know, I, thank you guys. We appreciate it. Yes, we do appreciate... I, I, I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart that, you know... That you have all, some of you have kept with us. Some of you are brand new to the podcast. Yeah. And, you know, we still appreciate the hell out of you, too. Um, 
you know, <laughs> I, hey, I appreciate the hell out of you, Kevin. Yeah, you too, man. I couldn't, I, I mean, we could do the show without each other, but I don't think we would. Like, no, there's certain probably. situations, like if, you know, there's a family emergency and the show must go on, whatever, fuck it. But I don't know if I'd want to do it by myself. Yeah. You know? Because the whole point of this, you know, we said it over and over, was we wanted to talk about things that Yeah, we wanted to talk about dumb shit that we like. And it interested us. We didn't want to be stuck. We didn't want to be on those podcasts stuck in a certain genre. Yeah. We might have fucking a ton more listeners to our podcast. I mean, we still want more listeners. But I think we cover some shit that we absolutely love. The problem is, is like, (laughs) as much as I like true crime... There's almost too many true crime podcasts out there. Yeah. Because I didn't realize that I'm not the only fucking weirdo that's like, oh, I like I like listening to, you know, the gory details of somebody rifling through somebody else's insides. But, but apparently there's a bunch of us. But you know what? There's also a bunch of us that like many different things. I'm telling you right now, if half of these fucking police departments and the FBI with all of these unsolved like crimes and shit, if they would turn them over to podcasters, we'd solve that shit in 45 minutes like NCIS. Probably. I'm telling you, like, if you got fucking a group of them together, be like, no, let's just fucking go through the records and shit. Mm, it was him. Go check it out and be like, oh, fuck. I mean, if, if <laughs> we, we, we'd do it. We'd get the shit done. I mean, if we have to send someone based on looks, we'll just send Justin. Yeah, he's a handsome fuck. But <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll send Justin. He can be our If they turned fucking Bigfoot shit over to podcasters, we'd find that motherfucker by the end of the show. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we have some people. We'd be having fucking beers with him by next episode. We have some people in our, you know, our group that, well, if we put all of us together, I mean, we probably could find the goddamn guy. I'm pretty sure some or of the, girl. some of the other podcasters that I've talked to, if we put our minds together and we had the information that we needed, we could find the fucking Holy grail. We could figure out what's at the bottom of the fucking Oak Island money pit. Yeah, probably. Which I'm guessing is probably just a bunch of dead Canadian teenagers. I'm not quite sure. (laughs) I I think there's actually, there was something there. I, from what they, you know, that's an interesting topic, but that's a fucking big topic. That's a long one. So, but but, anyway, uh, we've got another hundred episodes to get there. Yeah. I mean, like I said, appreciate the hell out of you. Thanks for, you know, being there, you know, through our up and ups and downs. You know, we've had some moments where, you know, we've had some shit happen. Yeah. You guys have all been there for us. Um, and it's not just shit with the show. We've had personal shit that's happened and people yeah. have been, you know. So we appreciate you guys. We really do. Yeah, we really we do. literally wouldn't do this show without you because nobody else is going to listen to us. <laughs> my fucking mom doesn't even listen to this. Are you my, serious? My mom doesn't either. Your dad used to. I don't know if he still does or not, but. I think he does. I don't think my dad knows what a podcast is. No. But, yeah. And he's younger than my dad. Yeah. But my dad's also like a like big old hick. Like, yeah. He just learned about the internet about 10 years ago. Ah, it's been longer than that. Not really. And he's been hooked on fucking watching TV on it ever since. So. True. True. Um, but, yeah. So, I mean, again, thank you guys. We appreciate yes. it. We do. I, um, do. I do. I know I do. Yeah. Even, even though, you know, I, I kind of have, you know, snide mass remarks back to everybody about, you know, about what you Because you, you take shit about. too personally. You should say, be like, fuck I it, whatever. I fucking do, okay? You shouldn't. You should be like, you know, you're some fucking stranger on the internet. <laughs> fuck you in the face. If I ever met you in, the real, in real life, I'd kick you in the balls. You wouldn't do anything about it. <laughs> so, and you know exactly who you are. Yeah, you know who you are. You motherfucker. <laughs> uh, we still love you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I don't know if he even still listens or not. So I anyway. I hope not. I kind of yeah. I kind of hope fuck him. Yeah. But anyway, let's wrap this puppy yeah. up. Yeah. So. so we will be back with episode 100B next 100. week. Yes. Part- not 101. 100B. 100B. Yes. It's different. Love it. Chernobyl the... Continuation. Chernobyl Part 2, Nuclear Boogaloo. Yeah, There's our title. Nice. Fucking called it. Love it. Anyway. Yes. So go to... And, go oh, to, by the way, before we get to, to uh, studio... Jesus, you I, chatty Kathy. Sh- <laughs> with this being episode 100, uh, iTunes, Apple Podcast, whatever the fuck mm-hmm. they're calling it now, as soon as this one uploads, they're going to start deleting our old episodes because they only allow 100 episodes at a time, which is stupid. But if you want to go back and listen to the old stuff, 
you can go over to ageofradio.com forward slash dark windows podcast. And apparently people have been. And you can listen to our old stuff. And if you can't remember the name of that website, you can go to darkwindowspod.com and there is a link to get you directly to our Age of Radio page, which will set you up to listen to everything. And while we're talking about Age of Radio, thank you, everybody there, Jeremy and Nikki, all you guys that that run everything over there. You guys have been awesome. Like this is the best that the show's been since we started is after we joined the network. Yes. Hey, and we it was kind of weird that you guys are like, Hey, you should join. And we're like in the middle of, uh, <laughs> we're in the middle of North Hollywood. And they're like, Hey, so episode two's done. Oh, by the way, we're on a fucking podcast network now. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, that was, I don't know how I was long like, ago. Fuck dude. That was, uh, Oh boy. Almost two years ago. <laughs> it was a long ass time ago. Yeah. I mean, which by the way, we're coming up on shootout season again, fucking September. Phew. So I got to get my shit together. Damn. Shootout season. I got a big motherfucker coming up for that. So yeah, but, so. but not only can you, uh, find the age of radio on our, on our, on our website, yes. but you can also find links to, you can find, if you go through dark windows pod, you can find links to our age of radio to listen to, to listen. Mm-hmm. You can find links to our Patreon. Yep. You can find links to our threadless. And you can find links to our sponsor, Studio Headphones. So see, there. I don't have to say anymore. One fucking stop shop. Yes. Because that's how we like to do it. Exactly. It's convenient. Exactly. And then, you know... If the we... website is not fancy, but it's functional. And if you don't remember... Just like us. And if you don't remember all that, <laughs> you can you can email us at darkwindowspod at gmail.com. Guess what else you can do? Or you can go to Facebook and look us up on Facebook. Yeah. We're Dark Windows Podcast, only one on there. Yep. You can also go on to Twitter and Instagram. We're not great with Twitter. I know. Or we're, Instagram. We're, we're, we're picking back up our Instagram game. You know, we're, but, you know, we're, we're Dark Windows Pod on again, there. If, on you both can, of them. if you don't want to do all that shit, you can do all that shit directly from the website. That's true. <laughs> Motherfucker. Right? Like I said, not fancy. It's functional, just like us. I wear cargo pants because I got space for shit. Not because I know I look like an asshole when I wear them. But I got shit and space for that shit. He's got shit. A lot of shit. So. So, yeah. So. Here's to fucking maybe another hundred, I guess. Yes. Uh, Or maybe not. (laughs) We'll see. As long as you you all keep. I guess in the next hundred, we got to like step our shit up. We got to start doing some cool stuff. You know what we should really do? We should really like reinvest in those bus tickets now that the country's starting to open back up and like continue on our cryptid road trip because <laughs> it's been like six months Listen. we we stopped because we knew coronavirus was coming exactly yep we got a we got a friend that works in a fucking umbrella corps at china in china and he's like hey listen we got this thing that's gonna happen it's not quite as cool as zombies but it's still gonna kill a bunch of people and by you, coughing you might not want to be taking bo- bus trips about yeah. this time of year so save your save your your, your fucking Oh, frequent whatever in the air things. <laughs> your frequent bus miles? Yeah. <laughs> Save your, free, your frequent busing miles. Kevin's drunk. I'm not real drunk, but I'm like, I'm he's almost start, there. He's starting to go. <laughs> okay, listen. Listen. I drank a bottle of champagne. Linda, honey. And it's 10 o'clock at night. Okay. On and a fucking excuse. Tuesday. Well, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's kind of both of our faults because I didn't want to record Sunday and your sinuses were fucking your face yesterday. So. Yes, my allergies are fucking yeah. me. They're doing it right now. But anyway. So we yeah. got to work in the morning, motherfucker. This we is going to suck. I said we. Oh. We. 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 I'm not that French. Yo, anyway. Yes, you are. <laughs> anyway. Oh, with that said, take us away, bitch. Here's to another hundred. And just because you can't see out into the dark doesn't mean that the dark can't see into you. And may all your Chernobyls be bright. Oh, that's fucked, dude. <laughs> that was bad. That was real, real not okay. <sighs> this episode you. was a blast. 